Okay, this particular lesson covers the SEA GCSE Digital Technology Unit 4 topic of testing. So by the end of, end of this lesson you should be able to explain the following iterative approaches to testing. Iterative just means uh, repeatable. Um, you should be able to know what white box and black box testing are and the differences between them and also system unit and integration testing as specific types of testing and you should be able to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of all of these approaches except for integration testing. So why do we test in the first place? Well, I, I guess the, the uh, testing is an integral part of the software development process and it ensures that the application does what it is supposed to do and also is free from um, bugs or errors and there are different types of errors. Uh, there are syntax, logic and runtime errors uh, and the whole point of testing is to try and well if not eradicate these errors but certainly to reduce them down to um, infinitesimally small levels so that they don't affect the, the running of the program and testing is supposed to I guess ensure that the, the software runs uh, runs normally in all different types of conditions and by conditions I mean on different devices and, and using different browsers uh, and I guess works um, despite the uh, best in, intentions of, of the end user to try and enter the data that they're supposed to enter. In other words that it, the program doesn't crash if the the user enters data which is not um, accepted by the program. Um, so uh, in terms of the errors, logic errors are I guess are quite simple to explain in the sense that um, the, the program I guess runs normally um, but doesn't produce the output that you would expect. In other words the, the code is fine, the syntax is fine but just the internal logic of the program, there's there's a, an issue with it. So for example, if I showed you the, the following bit of code, so I'll give you uh, 15 seconds just to look at it. Now, the whole point of this code is, um, this is a, a, an algorithm uh, and you're the user's been asked to enter in two values, x and y, and then there's a decision being made as to whether x is greater than y. And if x is greater than y, then x has been set to y and y has been set to x. Print x and print y. So you're, I guess you're printing, it's a, sort, a basic sorting algorithm, and you're saying that if x is greater than y, you want to swap those two, the position of those two variables around. Now, the issue is, and it's a logical issue, this, the algorithm, um, if this was coded, the code would be fine, except it's, a, it's the, the logic. If you um, set um, x equal to y and then y equal to x, x and y would be exactly the same. You, what you would need to do here is you need to create a third variable to, to store the value of x, um, while you overwrite the value of x with y uh, and then this the original value of x could be copied in, into y so that you have distinct values for x and y uh, except in the situation where of course x and y are both the same to begin with. So that's a logical error. Syntax errors are errors in the actual code itself and that's where the, the translator within the actual code editor simply doesn't understand the, in, the syntax that you've entered. Uh, and typically uh, in a program we've we've all had syntax errors if for example you created a, a variable um, an int variable age and you capitalize the the age uh, variable uh, and then you refer to it later on in the program uh, without capitals then it would throw up a syntax error in the sense that it doesn't recognize this variable age uh, and even though it's spelt correctly you've cap in, in one um, reference you have capitalized the A and the other reference you haven't. So in terms of types of uh, testing, no, sorry I should say um, runtime errors. Um, runtime errors are errors in the code that you only discover when you run the program. Uh, so the, there's no issues with the actual um, 
the, the, the code as such, no errors with the, the logic, but whenever you go to run the program, it, it somehow throws an error. And it might be something to do with um, um, an array, an index out of ray, uh, index out of range exception in an array where you try to add a value to an array to a position in the array that doesn't exist, or maybe it can't find a, a file that it's writing to or reading from, and you will only discover these issues whenever the program is in operation. Um, so that's known as a runtime error. Now, in terms of different types of testing, you've, I guess you've got two sort of basic categories, black box and white box. And uh, what I like about these little um, images is that it really does provide an excellent metaphor of what is going on in this type of testing. So black box testing, all the end, the, the user, the tester, if you like, sees are the inputs and outputs. It doesn't see anything that goes on inside the black box. And typically black box testing is done by end users themselves. And end users don't have any experience of programming. They just simply put stuff in to the program and then observe the output. Uh, so black box testing is typically done by end users themselves and it's typically used to, 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 to test the functionality of the software. So advantages are um, you, the end user can, can spot if the program doesn't do what it's supposed to do in terms of meeting their requirements. Um, the tester doesn't have to have any programming knowledge or know how the software is being created. So that's perfect for an end user who typically doesn't have any understanding of programming. Uh, tests can be completed by independent companies. So typically if, if a, a testing process is conducted by the programmer themselves, there can be some bias. They will want the program to work and they may not uh, report any issues as they appear. And tests can be completed as soon as specifications are completed. So in other words, they can um, they can run the test as soon as the, 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 the test plan is, is outputted or created. Disadvantages, well, you can't pot, test every possible scenario, end user scenario, although there is a, a type of test called beta testing, which beta tests are um, early releases of software to the end user to allow um, more people to, to test the software and find issues with the software. Um, with black box testing, that on, it, it, it's really dependent upon the actual user requirements being clearly defined. Um, uh, if those aren't clearly defined, then it can be difficult for an end user to test the software properly. Um, white box testing, then white box testing, as the image shows, yes, you can you can see the inputs and outputs, but you can also see what's going on inside the uh, the 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 program as well so the, the tester can see the code and maybe white box testing would, would have been better described as transparent testing because obviously in a white box you can't see inside a white box uh, either so but hopefully it conveys the sense that the fact that black box and white box are very different in that sense um, so whenever white box testing takes place the programmer can see the code itself so the code is exposed so if there is an issue then um, typically you can go in and manipulate the code and see the code so typically you've been performing white box testing and um, whenever you've been developing your application so it goes beyond the the user interface uh, and the user or the, the the tester can then trace the code to see where the issues are arising from Advantages, white box testing is something you do from the very first line of code. You're, you're looking at the code as you go along and you're identifying issues. And you don't need for the, well, it says here the GUI or what's known as a graphical user interface to be created. So you don't need to see your main menus, which is what an end user would see when they're testing an application. You don't need that. You don't need the, the menus to be able to identify errors in the code. So, and it's, because it's working at a, an atomic level, line by line, you can then identify the exact source of any particular bug in your program. Disadvantages of well, white box testing, because you are working at a very sort of detailed, high level of detail, testing can be very complex and you do need specific sets of skills to be able to do this level of testing. You need to have a thorough knowledge of programming and how code um, operates and how it's implemented. Um, you also need to be very 
uh, discipline in terms of your test script and maintenance. Now we'll look at actually test scripts uh, in the next lesson, but you need to keep um, very detailed records on what tests you've done and the, the results of those tests. Um, in terms of the, the tools that you need for white box testing, you know, there are programs, Visual Studio is actually quite good for testing, but there are programs out there whereby the testing tools built into the, the code editor itself are not very good. For example, Python, um, one of the most popular code editors for Python is a program called Idle and it doesn't have very good testing facilities built into it. If you think of what Visual Studio provides you with, it provides you the, the, the line um, and column number for the, the, the code issue originates, and it also gives you suggestions as to how to fix it, um, all built into the, the program. And that's not always the case in, in different code editors. Now, in terms of the three specific types of testing, um, unit integration and system testing. We're going to look at unit testing first, and again, the image shows you a little bit, conveys a little bit of meaning as to what unit testing is. Unit testing is uh, the smallest testable part of an application, and as you write a line of code, you are effectively unit testing. You're testing every line of code, uh, so it's atomic level testing, um, and you you're testing each line of code, and you're testing that each method does what it's supposed to do. And most of your code should should be contained within a method. So you're testing those methods, not only line by line work, but also the method produces the the expected outcome as well. Advantages of that, because you're testing it uh, sort of method by method, if you like, you can then very quickly identify where issues arise. Um, development is supposedly faster. You know, you can develop the application more quickly because you can detect where the issue is arising. Uh, and therefore debugging is, is easier because you are able to, to trace where the errors are coming from um, in a specific part of the program. Disadvantages, well, because of its atomic level um, testing, um, you, you can get bogged down in the nitty gritty and you can spend a long time just um, identifying and resolving you know, small issues in your program. It doesn't show the absence of errors. It doesn't show you, um, you know, runtime errors, for example. Uh, it may not show you um, logical errors as well. It just shows you really that there's no issues with the code itself. Uh, and because of that, it's hard to create real realistic, useful tests because you can never properly test for all the different ways that an end user could use your application. Then you've got system testing, and system testing makes sure, make sure that the system works as described in the specification. And this is done through a, a, a test plan, and the test plan is something we'll look at in the, in the next lesson. Uh, and you test different uh, parts of your program with what's known as extreme valid and invalid data to make sure that the system produces the correct results. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to replicate or imitate how an end user would use the application. So you're trying to test data um, comfortably within the boundaries, um, on the edge of the boundaries and outside the boundaries of the system to try and see how the application copes with different types of data. So the advantages of system testing is that it does simulate actual system usage. You know, you're trying to replicate how an end user would use your, your system. Um, and it doesn't make any, um, you know, assumptions about the system structure. In other words, it's really just testing um, how the, the system handles real data, real world data. Disadvantages, of course, a bit like unit testing, it can miss logical errors, it can, it can miss runtime. Well, it actually, it, sorry, it, it does pick up on runtime errors because you're 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 testing it with, with real world data, but it can miss logical errors. And you can have a lot of redundant testing. You know, there's a this part of the, the the systems development process where you're testing the system because you're using real world data it can just f seem very very laborious and it is a very labor intensive process this particular type of testing lastly we have integration testing and this is testing where all the individual components are tested together as a group uh, and you're seeing how the different components interact with each other and for example you might be testing how your menu system allows you then to navigate between the different menus in your application and how, for example, you, your 
um, reading in CSV files allows you then to um, log into the system. So obviously you can't log into the system unless you successfully read in the CSV file to give you your usernames and passwords to authenticate the user. So those are two different parts of the system, essentially two different methods, and you're seeing how they work together. So that's integration testing. And uh, now we don't need to no look at advantages and disadvantages um, of that because that is not in the specification. Okay, the next lesson we'll look at test plans, which really looks at um, system testing, and we'll cover that uh, during our next lesson.